I'm working on my number 153 violin. So uh, this is a Guarneri model violin. This is the back of it. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty close to being finished on the outside. The arching is all done. Uh, uh, the, it's got the purfling in and so on and so forth. And what I'm doing on it is uh, doing the final scraping using a scraper to give it a nice smooth finish and sort of blending in all the, the little irregularities and bumps and lumps and so on and so forth. And one thing that helps me to do this it's really nice when you can have both hands free to work on something. Um, and, and the thing that helps me to do this is this interesting fixture here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, on top we've got this little platform, it's a plate holding fixture, so it's the top or the back plate that you would work on in here. And then it's attached to mm -hmm. this bowling ball. Now Keith and Ray Dorr, they were both tool and die makers so they were very much into using and making and using um, various jigs and fixtures in the violin making process to help with the process. And this is one of their, I think, particularly innovative ones. They took a bowling ball and the thumb hole of the bowling ball, they sort of tapped and drilled it, drilled and tapped it, and then put in uh, some threaded plumbing rod and attached the you know, plate holding fixture onto it. And so with that, you can rotate the, rotate the plate, which would be holding the top or the back, uh, 360 degrees at any sort of an angle. And when you're finishing off a back like this, it's, uh, it really helps if you sort of just get one light and get these long shadows on it, which really reveal the uh, all the flaws in the arch and all the irregularities, bumps or lumps, whatever. And uh, and with this, you can do that quite easily, and then attack it from any angle or position. Uh, and when you're doing some of the roughing out, if I was using a gouge on this still, uh, you can tighten this down. It draws these two boards together on the bowling ball and really renders the, the plate almost immobile. So you can really attack the piece with some with a good deal of vigor or force. So that's helpful when you're doing the early arching and you're uh, carving away with the gouge. Or if you're working on the inside and you're starting to hollow it out, or you're taking out very fairly large chunks of wood at the uh, at the outset, and so you would. You can get here, you can get uh, both hands on a gouge and really uh, hog some wood out, so to speak. So, so that's the bowling ball fixture. And Keith and Ray were very innovative in their use of all these jigs and fixtures. They were very machine tool oriented as far as uh, uh, a lot of the basic process.